baby burn. What is going on everybody? It is your boy Nothing But Skills and today I'm bringing you guys another division video. In today's video I'm going to be focused on Firecrest, one of my favorite PvE builds. If you guys have watched my last Firecrest video, which I released a long time ago when the 6P set have initially came out, there's a lot of changes that I've done to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over all the changes and then hopefully I can explain it in a way that you guys know that this is a better way to run it than the last way I had it set up. If you guys have any questions after watching this video, use the comment section down below. If you guys enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up and if you're new to my channel and it's the first time you watching one of my videos hit that subscribe button and always turn the notification bell on so when i do release a video you get notified also if you ever want to watch me live playing any video game from the division to h1z to god of war you can do that on twitch it's twitch.tv forward slash nothing but skills so let's get into the video so what does the firecrest six piece do so i'm going to give you a quick breakdown for everybody who might not know and if you do know just give me two seconds and then we'll be over that so for set two bonus is going to give me three incendiary grenades um set bonus three is going to give me additional 50% flame turret range and then additional 30% flame turret damage set bonus for your weapon damage is increased by 15% against burning targets which is great because if you stack that with the urban MDR which already gives you an additional 18% against targets with status effects that's a lot of damage you have adding up there set bonus 5 is going to give you an additional grenade 5% flame turret range and 20% flame turret damage that's an additional 50% flame turret damage that you're going to get from just running the 5 piece and then an additional 55 flame turret range from running the five piece now the six piece a lot of people may say this is up to you if you want to run it as a six piece i personally like running it as a six piece because bullets have a two percent chance of causing an enemy to burn and that only works towards npcs but that's really cool because if an npc is running towards you and if you're hitting them with enough bullets the chances of you making them burn is pretty likely going to happen it also gives you burning targets can cause an explosion when killed once every 10 seconds so if you make one NPC explode every NPC around him can catch on fire the agent is immune to their own explosion that's one big change that you might have seen from my last video on my last video when I would make an NPC explode I would always catch on fire but they changed that so you are immune when those NPCs do explode and then catch everything around them on fire you will not get on fire and the last thing that the six piece does is NPCs set on fire by your flame turret will burn 25% longer so how do I have my six piece fire crest set up well for the chest piece it's rolled electronics it has skill haste, it has health, and it has increased kill XP. Now, personally, this is up to you. You could either run skill haste on here for the 8% skill haste, or you could put enemy armor damage. I chose to add a little bit of skill haste on here because I want my skills to come back a little bit faster like that overdose. So if I'm taking a lot of damage since I don't have stamina and hardly any toughness, I will be able to overdose and heal myself up and be able to survive a battle. Now the mods that I put on here are very key and I highly recommend them. I'm running two electronics mods with 4% damage to elites. Some of you might say, why not run 267 electronics mods with maxed out skill power? The reason why is because not only is that 4% damage to elite going to be stacked on my flame turret, it's also going to be stacked on my urban MDR. Elites are gold enemies or named enemies. Even when I stacked electronics mods with skill power mods on here, my flame turret was doing less damage to those elites. And I'll show you guys in a little bit what I'm talking about. For the mask, it's rolled electronics. It has skill power and then it has damage to elites. For the mods, I'm running electronics mod with 4% damage to elites. For the knee pads, the road electronics, they have skill power, they have damage to elites, they have burn resistance, and they have disrupt resistance. For the mods, I'm running electronics mods with 4% damage to elites, and then performance mod with 4% turret damage. For the backpack, it's road electronics, the major attribute is skill power, and the minor attribute is ammo capacity. For the mods, I'm running electronics mods with 4% damage to elites, and then two performance mods with 4% turret damage. For the gloves, the road electronics, they have assault rifle damage, enemy armor damage, and skill haste here. And for the holster, I put skill haste on here because I want to stack a little bit more skill haste so those heals do come back faster. And then worst case, if my turret does get damaged, it will be right back. If we get into the weapons, now you're going to see my primary is going to be Urban MDR with 20% enemy armor damage. This is not fully optimized. This gear set is not fully optimized, so it still has potential of hitting harder. The base damage on it is 40,000. The talents I'm running on here are talented. Killing a target with this weapon increases skill power by 15% for 20 seconds. The effect does not stack. Killing a new target refreshes the timer. So this is really great for if you kill an NPC, then you throw out your turret, it's going to have an additional 15% skill power on top of there, so it's going to hit a lot harder. And I'll show you the difference between when my turret hits without Talented activated and when it does hit when Talented is activated.
The next talent I have on the Urban MDR is Competent. Weapon damage is increased by 10% for 15 seconds after using the skill. Now this is great since I will be spamming my Overdose a lot and I will be throwing out my Flame Turret. So I should have Competent active about 95% of the time. And then the bottom talent, which is the best talent on the Urban MDR, and especially if you're running a Firecrest build, is Distracted. Your damage is increased by 18% against targets with status effects. For my backup, I have the House. It has 23% critical hit chance. The base damage is 13.9k. It also has Talented, the same talent I have on my Urban MDR. It also has Competent, the same talent I have on my Urban MDR because when you are running 9,800 electronics, there are not too many talents that you can put on your weapon that you will be able to unlock. So I do have Talented on there, I have Competent, and the only difference is the special talent that comes on each exotic, and this is Card Counter for the house. So one half of the magazine does 20% increased damage. The half which deals increased damage flips after 15 seconds or when the magazine is empty. The way I have my Urban MDR modded is I'm running a C79 scope with critical hit damage, headshot damage and optimal range. I have an Omega Rifle Suppressor with headshot damage, 4% critical hit damage, and 2.5 critical hit chance. I have a small grip with critical hit damage, accuracy, and stability. And then I have an extended magazine with magazine size, critical hit chance, and critical hit damage. For my house, I'm running critical hit damage, headshot damage, critical hit chance, a tyrant suppressor with critical hit chance, headshot damage, and critical hit damage, a small grip with critical damage, reload speed, and accuracy, and then an extended magazine with magazine size, critical hit chance, and rate of fire. If we get into my skills, you're gonna see I'm running an overdose, which is gonna heal me for 296,000. So that's pretty much gonna give me overheal till max. Even if I'm my last segment of health, I should be able to overheal all the way to my full health bar plus the overheal. And then, of course, I'm gonna be running a flame turret. And for my second skill, of course, I'm going to be running a flame turret because I am running a fire crest. Now on here, you're going to see that it says that I'm only going to put out 17.9k damage. Those gold enemies or those named enemies. If you look in this video, without talented being procced, my flame turret is doing 26,000 damage. And that is a lot higher than what you see on here, right? Because I'm getting that additional damage to elites that I have stacked on this build. We're going to see exactly how much damage to elites I have fully stacked throughout this build in just a second. But what I want to show you is is there's a big difference between what you see on the screen and the amount of damage I'm doing. So 26,000 is a lot higher than the 17,900. You see that it says my flame turret can do. Now, when talented is procced, that goes up to 30,000 as you see in this video right here. There's a big difference, you see. So without talented proc, I'm hitting 26,000. With talented proc, that's 30,000 my flame turret's doing. So that flame turret is hitting a lot harder than I would be able to get a flame turret that just has skill power and higher electronics rolls. That extra 20% damage to elite plus the damage to elites I already have stacked throughout this build adds up at the end of the day and being able to put an additional 8,000 damage when I don't have talented proc pretty good and then when talented is proc that additional 12% damage and that additional 12,000 damage on top of the 18,000 damage I have right here that all adds up so my flame turret is hitting really hard and that's why I highly recommend if you guys can get those electronics mods with those 4% damage to elites you'll notice the difference if you want to test this out yourself put electronics mods with skill power on Go out there, fight some NPCs, and then put on these mods, the electronics mods with 4% damage to elites, and you'll see the big difference that that 20% does. Not only is that going to affect your flame turret, that's also going to affect your urban MDR. So that's what you have to keep in mind. You're not only getting extra damage towards your flame turret, you're also getting the extra damage towards your urban MDR. So at the end of the day, overall, you're just putting out way more damage than just having a high powered flame turret that doesn't even put out as much damage towards those named or elite enemies. For the special, if I'm running solo, I'll run recovery link. If I'm running in a group, I'll run survival link. I switch back and forth. This is up to you. Personal preference. I'll let you guys decide what you like running better. For the talents, I love running critical save. It's use a make it during low health to increase damage resistance by 20% for 10 seconds. Strike back, reach low health to reduce active skill cooldowns by 20%. I always run wildfire if I'm running a flame turret because applying burn to any target triggers 30% chance per each target within a 10 meter radius to catch on fire. And then for the fourth talent, that's up to you. Right now I have precision, headshot hostile to pulse them for 10 seconds. Sometimes I put on the move, but with fire crest, you're never really moving. You can put on tech support, but your flame turret's gonna stay up long enough. If you're in a group, you could run triage, heal an ally with a skill to reduce skill cooldowns by 15%. Especially if you're running such a big overdose, I could drop that overdose down, overheal everybody, and then I'll get that additional cooldown of 15%. If we go into my character, you're gonna see my critical hit chance on my urban MDR is only 5.5%. My critical hit damage is 70% and my headshot damage is 119%. My damage to elites, this is what is key guys, 
I'm getting an additional 46% damage to Leech stacked on this build. My enemy armor damage is 28%, which is great because when I do use my Urban MDR, I'm getting a lot of DPS. My skill power is 331,000. My skill haste is at 22%. And if we go back to the skills, you're going to see my overdose is going to come back every 28 seconds. And then my flame turret is going to come back every 32 seconds. And that is reduced also with the talents that I'm running. So if I'm running triage, it's going to come back a lot faster. If I'm running strike back, it comes back faster. So those things are always going to help your skills come back faster. My max health is only 214,000. That's why that overdose is key. My armor mitigation, since this isn't fully optimized, is at 31%. My burn resistance is 33%. My disrupt resistance is 31%. And that's pretty much it, guys. This is my Firecrest build, the build I like to call the Fireman. If you guys have any questions on this build, let me know in the comment section. If I missed something, if for some reason I skipped an item, let me know in the comment section, and I'll try to clarify that question as quick as possible. Thank you guys again for all the support. Remember, if you're new to my channel, it's the first time you're watching a video, hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up. And as always, if you don't see me in Last Stand, if you don't see me in Skirmish, if you don't see me in the Dark Zone, it's only a matter of time. Nothing but skills is out.